when we're talking about older drivers, you know, the goal is really to keep people driving as safe as possible as long as possible. Exactly. And when we look at uh, the data for, you know, you, you mentioned the traffic safety industry here profession. When we look at the data, we know that older drivers are typically safer drivers when you compare them to other age groups. So they, that means that they take fewer risks behind the wheel. They're more likely to wear their seatbelt, less likely to text and drive, less likely to drink and drive. Um, but they are more likely to be injured or killed if they're involved in a crash. And that's simply because of age-related changes. We are looking forward our way from Studio C in the 511 Studios. That's in the Brewer District just south of downtown Columbus, Ohio. Hi, this is Brett. We have heard all the jokes and likely made comments ourselves when the driver in front of us is poking along well below the speed limit. Well, uh, what is our first reaction is that that person's too old to drive. Well, today we're going to explore the changes and improvements coming to our transportation systems so it is safe for everyone on the road. Brett, we have two wonderful expert guests joining us today to provide a positive look at the programs and services that support older drivers. And chances are pretty good what supports older drivers is also supporting younger drivers, too. So joining us today is Kimberly Schwind, Assistant Director and the Training Programs Administrator, Ohio Traffic Safety Office, which is a division of the Ohio Department of Public Safety. Also, Angie Wise, the Ohio Statewide Car Fit Coordinator for the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank so nice you. to be here. Well, um, as Carol has dug up, older drivers are increasing exponentially from 7 million on the nation's roads in 1985 up to 16.5 million in 2020. We've got a lot of information to provide you, the audience, but first, let's learn about our guests. Kimberly and Angie, tell us about your background, how you moved into this career field, and, and a bit about your agencies. Let's, let's start with Kimberly. Okay, well, I actually started my career as a broadcast meteorologist, believe it or not. I worked in Zanesville at WHIZ, the Ohio News Network, and then WHIO in Dayton. Um, and a lot of what I reported on focused on keeping people safe during different kinds of weather, including, you know, driving and rain and snow and ice. Um, so after five years, I left the media business and took a job at AAA Ohio Auto Club. And I was the spokesperson there, worked there for 12 years. Um, I talked with the media a lot about safety on our roadways. And a few years into my job there, I started overseeing our traffic safety programs. Um, senior mobility was a priority issue for AAA at the time. And the programs included mature operators course and car fit. Uh, so I got really involved in car fit, became a car fit technician. And I know we're going to talk a little bit more about that program later on. Um, I started my current job actually in January of 2023 at the Ohio Traffic Safety Office. So in my current role, I oversee state-funded training programs. So driver training, Motorcycle Ohio. I also oversee the state's ignition interlock device program, uh, other traffic safety initiatives, and also our public communication efforts for the Ohio Traffic Safety Office. Um, I, I've also maintained my role that I, I started when I was at AAA as the leader of the older road user emphasis area, which I know we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but a little bit about the Ohio Traffic Safety Office. So it's a division of the Ohio Department of Public Safety, and it's dedicated to saving lives and preventing injuries on Ohio's roads by using creative leadership, innovative education, and comprehensive enforcement programs. So at OTSO, we strive to work in partnership with local, state, and federal entities to advance equity and highway safety programs to ensure that they benefit all road users in Ohio. Um, so OTSO, it was what we call the Ohio Traffic Safety Office, their acronym is OTSO, uh, awarded t over $22 million in federal funds in federal fiscal year 2023 to 140 Ohio agencies for statewide programming to improve traffic safety and to reduce traffic-related fatalities. Uh, in May of 2023, the Ohio Traffic Safety Office started providing federal funds 
from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging for Ohio's first state or statewide car fit coordinator. Uh, and that's where Angie comes in. Cool. Angie. I always thought that my career was going to be in physical therapy. I can still vividly remember the day that we had a uh, career fair at my high school and a physical therapist came in and described what they did. And I was always interested in anatomy and science. But when I heard them speak and and how they could serve um, older adults, I was like, oh, that's it. That's how I combine these two things. I um, got my bachelor degree at The Ohio State University, and then I went to Hawaii for a year to become a physical slowdown. Go Bucks. Yes, yes. OH. <laughs> I <O. laughs> And then I went to Hawaii for a year to be a physical therapist assistant, because if it was only going to take me another year, I said I was going to go someplace with water. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came home and did my clinical in Columbus and um Worked for a few years in a skilled nursing facility, and then I spent over a decade working in home health. I took some time off when I had my son, and when I was looking to go back into the workforce, COAAA was hiring in their screening department, and I thought, well, that's a good way to allow me to continue to serve older adults. You learn a lot about an agency when you work in their screening department and you have to tell every caller about the different parts of the agency. (laughs) Um, So I quickly learned that COAAA plans, funds, and delivers services that help older adults and individuals with disabilities remain safe and independent in their home. We serve eight counties. It's Franklin County and then all of the counties that, that touch Franklin County. And we manage services for approximately 14,000 people in those eight counties. Fun fact, uh, COAAA operates under Columbus Recreation and Parks. So I am a Columbus Rec and Parks employee, and I got to attend one of their all-staff meetings. And let me tell you, they know how to throw an all-staff meeting. (laughs) Fun. There was lots of dancing. Yes. I think there was some positive shouting that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm uh, very proud that I get to be associated with them. I think they're doing great things in our city. I spent one year in the screening department at COAAA, and that's when we received the grant to create this statewide car fit coordinator position. And I thought that that is really what a great way to blend my career in physical therapy and my service to older adults. Very so, nice. So how long did you cry on the plane flying from Hawaii back to the state? <laughs> Just, yeah. I was too busy carrying my box of pineapples that oh, I wanted to bring okay. home to everybody in a box ripped when I was in the airport. Oh, and so no. A oh, year in Hawaii. Gosh. I don't know if I'd have come back. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. Yeah, really. Really. Yeah. I, I, yes. Um, but you, you know what, I'm th- what I find so fascinating about all of this? Brett and I have done a lot of podcasts regarding careers and how people get into their careers. What fascinating paths you have both yeah. chosen or have had an opportunity to go down those paths, but also who thought there would be so many opportunities about cars? Not not making them, not fixing them, but helping people drive in them. I I, it, I just yeah. find this amazing that there that we have this industry and you both have brought to it very different backgrounds and skills to your agency. So kudos to both of you. This is great. So thanks. Anyway, okay, so let me keep moving on here. Um, there are many reasons that any person can lose their ability to drive, not just because they got old. There could be in a medical emergency, a physical limitation, lots of things. With older individuals, it's inevitable that physical and cognitive changes occur, which could affect driving skills. Tell us what to look for. What changes begin to occur that we may notice in ourselves or a loved one? And how can our medical professionals help us to continue driving? Yeah, so I'll start off. So first of all, I, w- I want to make sure that everybody understands that when, when we're talking about older drivers, you know, the goal is really to keep people driving as safe as possible 
as long as possible. Exactly. And when we look at uh, the data for, you know, you mentioned the traffic safety industry or profession. When we look at the data, we know that older drivers are typically safer drivers when you compare them to other age groups. So that means that they take fewer risks behind the wheel. They're more likely to wear their seatbelt, less likely to text and drive, less likely to drink and drive. Um, But they are more likely to be injured or killed if they're involved in a crash. And that's simply because of age-related changes. Um, And so some of the things to look out for, so some of these, you know, age-related changes or normal common risk factors can include changes in vision, hearing, strength, reflexes, and and memory. Um, So, for example, when we talk about vision, you might notice as you age that all of a sudden it seems harder to see at night. Um, and, And that's not your imagination, So eye specialists have actually estimated that the retina of a 60-year-old typically receives about one-third the light of a 20-year-old's retina. So you do need more light, right? So it does get harder to see at night. Um, And so it's really important to stay aware of different changing physical abilities and to adjust your driving habits accordingly. Um, You know, maybe avoid driving at night or limit your trips. Um, it's some of those things, you know, are are really, you can take into your own hands. Um, it's also important to understand that different medical conditions and certain medications may also impact somebody's ability to drive safely. Um, so older adults with one or more suspected or known medical conditions should, Talk to your doctor. Really, if you're concerned, the best place to start is your doctor. Um, If you're prescribed a new medication, you need to ask the questions. When you go to get that prescription at the pharmacy, they're not going to tell you this may impact your ability to drive. You have to know to ask those questions. Because needless to say, we can't read the directions on the medication packets because none, not even a 20-year-old can read anything that small. <laughs> well, and it might say, careful when operating heavy machinery. And you think, I don't operate a forklift. Exactly. Well, that exactly. means a car too, yeah. yes. right? Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that there's things called driver rehabilitation specialists. Um, and there's they're located throughout the state of Ohio. And so you if you talk to your physician, they... You know, if you have concerns about your driving um, or maybe you have concerns about a loved one's driving, um, a doctor can refer you to a driver rehabilitation specialist. And these specialists work with people of all ages and abilities to explore alternative driving and transportation Mm -hmm. solutions. So they're not necessarily going to take away your keys. Maybe you need adaptive equipment. Right. So they could help you with that. So they have professional backgrounds in occupational therapy, uh, a related health field and or driver education. And they've completed additional training and education to become certified in driver rehabilitation. Um, So they're going during an evaluation, they're going to take a look at the skills of someone who might have a disease or a condition that maybe is affecting their driving. So their evaluation has two parts. They're going to first evaluate the physical and mental abilities of that person that are required to safe driving. So things like computerized testing or a simulator. And then they're going to do a behind the wheel evaluation and they're going to look at the ability to get in the car, uh, uh, maybe adjustments for equipment, Things like seats or mirrors, uh, they're going to look at, can you start the car? Can you control the vehicle while you're driving? Um, you know, some people with arthritis, with kind of the the old keys, I don't know mm-hmm. if you have a, a key, sometimes it's hard to turn that key or maybe it's hard to grab the seatbelt. So they can look at things like that. And then based on the results, the specialist may recommend adaptive driving equipment, um, aids or adaptive te- techniques or some driver rehabilitation training. Um, They may also recommend transportation planning to help those drivers retire from driving 
or consider driving cessation. Again, that's always really the last resort. We want to make sure that people are driving, again, as safe as possible, as long as possible. Go, go, let, go let, let me um, uh, qu- clarify. So the an individual can get an evaluation from a driver rehab specialist just through their doctor. So it's like getting a prescription to get physical therapy. So Yes. So the doctor okay. can refer them to one of these okay. driver rehabilitation specialists. And actually, we have more information. There's more information on the website. It's transportation dot ohio dot gov forward slash older drivers and i think we'll we'll provide that Mm -hmm. that resource and there's actually a whole we have a whole document that overviews kind of what a driver rehabilitation specialist is and what they can do and how they can help you and how do you you know is it covered by insurance and and all the questions that you might ask along with a list of different driver rehabilitation specialists around the state so that information is on our website Well, I can't really stay with you. Your work focuses on the policy making needed to keep all drivers safe on the road, but particularly older drivers. The U.S. Department of Transportation provides funding, and then the Ohio Department of Transportation creates and updates the state's strategic highway safety plan. There are a lot of pieces to this plan, but part of it does cover the safety of older drivers. Can you give us an overview of this work? Yeah, so that's true. So the Strategic Highway Safety Plan is actually a multi-agency plan that's aimed at reducing traffic fatalities and serious injuries on all public roads. So what is this plan? Well, it's every state actually has one of these plans. It's required by federal law. Um, And ODOT, the Ohio Department of Transportation, oversees the plan with a multi-agency steering committee. So I serve on the steering committee, um, and then whatever is identified in this plan is eligible for funding. Um, So it's a five-year plan, so it goes on five-year cycles. The current cycle is 2021 through 2025, um, and it uses data to identify Ohio's safety priorities, and it really helps us to collaborate and to share resources to reduce fatalities and serious injuries. Uh, So This plan has 14 emphasis areas. So 14 traffic safety emphasis areas that are identified as we need to focus on these areas in order to save lives on Ohio's roads. Kind of based on the last five-year cycle. Based on the data from the last five-year cycle. And we continue to monitor it. So the steering committee meets quarterly and reviews the current data. And, you know, what are we seeing? What are the trends? What areas do we have to focus on? The older road users is actually one of these 14 emphasis areas. And so I lead this emphasis area, and we have a fantastic team that also assists in this. We've we've broken it, the older road user emphasis area down further into kind of four focus areas. So we focus on infrastructure that can help older adults. Um, you know, we talked about vision before, so lighting, um, certain things with the roads. We also focus on medically at-risk drivers. Um, So again, that's kind of part of that certified driver rehabilitation specialist. And what do you do if you're concerned about somebody's driving ability? Uh, We focus on alternative transportation, you know, planning for that driving retirement and, um, you know, what are alternative methods that people can get around because we want to make sure that people stay mobile uh, and then education. And so that's where where Angie fits in and that outreach um, and, and really trying to educate people on not only the efforts of the older road user emphasis area, but also different resources and tools that they can use to help themselves. Did, uh, this is, a, a, I'm a little off, off base here, it, not something that we've talked about, but just hit me. Um, does, does that group work with automakers to talk about the design of of cars is that at all part of the mix it's funny you should mention that because angie and i were actually just talking about that (laughs) and how automakers have come such a long way and um i know we're going to get into car fit here in a minute but we actually had some um of the engineers from honda a be trained in CarFit to learn about the program. So, um, it, yeah. So if you know if they can understand what are the the ways that we're trying to help older drivers, then 
you know, maybe they can design right. cars. Well, they and, recognize that market is there to buy more vehicles, too, well, uh, we, which is smart on their part. Yes. Well, to keep them buying cars Our, that are older yeah. drivers have more money to, to, to right. pay for new cars yeah. but i can remember yeah. the my first car i was only what in my 20s but i'm kind of short and when i sit i'm short and luckily my cousin sold cars so he i went over to see him and he goes this car will work for you he's like six two i'm not even five four and we both fit in it was a volkswagen and they made these cars so that they were adaptable to people mm. by height because a lot of cars are based on what men of six feet. Well, and that's where, you know, you'll have people that say, you know, the husband always drives and he drives a big truck. Right. Mm -hmm. And he always drives. And then he passes away and the wife is left with this big truck. Right. But is very difficult for her to drive. I have a hard time driving my husband's truck, so I would not want to be stuck driving that. <laughs> right, right. But, but uh, so, well, good. I'm glad I wasn't too far off base. Now, the other question I have for poor Kimberly, I asked her this as we were talking when we first started thinking about doing this podcast. So whose brilliant idea were roundabouts? And how do we think that older <laughs> adults, anyone can get through a roundabout without killing somebody? Well, I actually I did some research on oh, that. Oh, very so good. <laughs> that is, so I work for the Department of Public Safety um, and, and ODOT. They have a lot of resources on roundabouts. So we, we, you know, we were sister agencies, so we work very closely together. So I reached out to our friends over at ODOT. So, so basically, when we look at roundabouts, roundabouts actually have a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. I know people don't want to hear that. Um, but they, the data shows that they reduce fatal and serious injury crashes by 82% compared to a traditional two-way stop-controlled intersection. They also reduce fatalities and serious injuries by 78% compared to a signalized intersection. Mm -hmm. um, so according to ODOT, roundabouts are designed to operate at lower speeds, 20 to 30 mm -hmm. miles per hour. The geometry of a roundabout helps to prevent high angle crashes like T-bone crashes or mm -hmm. left turn angle crashes, mm -hmm. which which are more traumatic, right? Cause more serious injuries and deaths. That's a good point. Yeah. And then roundabouts reduce potential conflict points in an intersection to eight opposed to 32 in a traditional four-legged intersection. Interesting. So... Whether you like them or not, <laughs> the, the, I, I like them because it keeps traffic moving. That's I what mean, I, yeah, I, it reduces the amount of time you have to sit at a stoplight, or you get you know that because it's not a, a well designed four point stop that sort of thing. And sure. like you said, somebody blowing through on a yellow to a green or red yellow to red light, which I'm seeing more and more of, just mind boggling. That they, I got, I'm gonna take, get through this sort of right, thing. Right. Um, I I have no problem with them now. At first, it was a little bit odd, but it's like, but yeah. I well, think it, they it are. It takes some great education. Now. It does. It does. And, and go it through does. them a well, few and times. I, and I think the reason that some of the statistics are that it's so much safer is that I've talked to more older adults who basically will go will drive any way they can to stay away from a roundabout. Oh, I have heard mm. that as well. Oh, and yeah. we do have we did put some resources on on the website uh, for navigating roundabouts, but I mean, yes, the purposes of them, they all they are safer, they also, you know, keep that traffic moving, mm. they right. calm traffic. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know. I do so have to say that was probably the when our kids were learning how to drive. That was probably the last leg of them learning to drive when we were driving with them is to go through a roundabout. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. it's not think, as prevalent here in it's, Ohio it's, as yeah. it is and in other states. And it's that coming you're looking at two lanes coming in and, and negotiating. It's a lot for a 16-year-old brain to figure right. out until they're ready with other four-way stops, that sort of thing. It was the last thing we negotiated was was the roundabout. And once they got through, we went, I can do this. I can, yes, you bet you can. <laughs> you know, yes. that sort of and, thing. And it, yeah. it really is very dependent, I think, on the signage. Yes. You know, the yeah. better and clearer the signage, the easier it is. Yeah. Well, Kimberly, thank you for anyway. doing that research. I know I put her on the spot. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I know. Can I ask I something about roundabouts? Sorry, because sure. I feel like we have to 
talk about Caroline Griffiths and her one woman show to convince everyone about how fabulous oh, roundabouts are. Caroline provided me all this. Uh, I, I, I knew she went to her. So we have to give a shout out to her. <laughs> yes, yes. That I've been doing Super. outreach with the Safe It to Drive program at local um, senior expos and, and senior fairs. And Caroline has this roundabout rug. And people have opinions on roundabouts, and it only takes about 10 seconds of listening to Caroline for her to convince you how amazing that they are. So if you see a stay fit to drive sign, please come to the table and and talk to Caroline, and she will convince you about how wonderful they are. We we had that at the fair, and it was, yes, it was very interesting to hear all of the opinions. And I heard many people that say that they do not go to, to around they will drive 10 minutes out of the way to yes. avoid they the do so they maybe do. they need to talk to caroline <clears throat> and yes <laughs> i always whenever i go through a roundabout and i'm sort of you know gritting my teeth i remember going to paris back in the 1980s and they have what's equivalent to a roundabout and it's around the arc de triomphe i think and it's like 14 lanes Four, yeah so, Angie, you are the programmatic side of keeping drivers safe. COAAA is receiving federal funds to create your position as Ohio's first statewide CarFit coordinator. And so CarFit was developed in 2006 by AAA, AARP, and the American Occupational Therapy Association. So, We've been talking about CarFit. Now let's really hear what it is. Okay. Well, we like to say it is free, fast, and fun. And when I'm asked to describe what it is, I always like to start by describing what it is not. So it is not a test of your driving ability. We're not trying to take away your keys. We're not talking at all if you can continue to driving. It's not a mechanical inspection of your vehicle. I haven't been asked yet about this at a CarFit event, but I hear it happens. So I'm just waiting for that. Um, But it is an educational event where we provide information to drivers to help them fit more safely and comfortably in their own vehicles. Drivers, it's a it's a pull through event. Drivers arrive in their car, um, and then a trained technician goes over a twelve point checklist with them, where we discuss items such as seatbelt placement. A lot of drivers don't know that our seatbelts are adjustable. Making sure that you're sitting at least ten inches from that steering wheel in case the airbag deploys during a crash. Adjusting your mirrors to eliminate blind spots. And then my role as the statewide car fit coordinator is to just create some connectivity between the volunteers throughout the state um, and to serve as a, a resource and point of contact for them. We've had about 31 events so far this year, and we have about 19 more. So I'm really excited to get out um, across the state and and see how everyone's doing their car fit events and how we can just really have an opportunity to present this to more drivers. Yeah, I think that's really important that you realize that the program is not to take your keys away. Right. It is actually the opposite. Yes. We just want to give you the information right. about how you can feel comfortable in your car. Yeah, I think that's that's huge. That's huge. So I want to stay with you, Angie. There are other programs available to older drivers, such as AAA's Mature Operator Course. That's a state-approved course to enhance driving skills for those over 60. Um, AAA also has the AAA Roadwise Driver Online which is a defensive driver training. Um, If a member of our audience wants to ensure that they are driving safely, what should they first do and then take what steps they should take to utilize all of these resources? I think the first thing that a driver can do is to take a self-assessment. So we have a self-assessment checklist on the Stay Fit to Drive um, website. I think it might be easier for us to ask ourselves the questions of what might be making us feel uncomfortable when we're driving versus when someone else tells us what they think is making us uncomfortable as a driver. So you can take that self-assessment checklist. You can kind of identify what items might be making you uncomfortable, such as driving at night, and then you can adjust your, your driving accordingly. And maybe you're not, you're planning your road trips during the day and you're not driving um, at night. The next step, as you said, is you could take one of the uh, driving courses from AAA or AARP. And then if you feel like you need some additional assistance after that, that's when you could seek out um, a driver rehabilitation specialist. 
I myself have taken the AARP Smart Driver Tech Workshop online. I was noticing that when drivers were coming to CarFit events, that they were answering yes to all of my questions about vehicle technologies. All these new cars have forward collision warning and lane departure warning, and my car does not. <laughs> so I went and I, I did the AARP course so that I could become more familiar with these technologies that I'm seeing so often um, in the vehicles that are coming to CarFit events. Did, have, I would. I wanted to ask, Did have you found clients who are coming to CarFit events having more issues because of the new technologies or fewer issues? It's a toss-up, really. So some people really love it, um, and they feel like it. it is providing um, a lot of feedback to them that they might not have been aware of before. I do hear that people have said that they've turned off their technology because they're tired of it telling them that they look drowsy <laughs> or the one where it adjusts the steering wheel for you. But it, when I hear that, that's when I encourage them to go and, and to take those classes so that they could become more familiar with the technology that their their vehicle offers. This information is all online, um, but if you don't feel comfortable navigating it online, you can always call your local AAA, the American Automobile Association, or AAA, your area agency on aging, and we can talk about different plans across your, your driving span. Angie, what was the car we were just talking about? You said somebody came in and they said their car fits itself to them. And this is new technology. So back kind of back to your automaker question. Yes, it's the Genesis. It it you input your height and oh, wow. the your the distance to what is it? It's the your, steering wheel? No, it's your like how how deep in the seat that you fit. Hmm. Okay. And then it will adjust your seat. Who, for who makes you. the Genesis? We looked it up. We looked Wasn't it, it up. It was Hyundai, yes. but it looks like it's become its own car brand. So it's an offshoot of Hyundai. Interesting. It's a luxury Dang. car brand, the Genesis. So uh, I, I found that fascinating that, yeah. you know, we're getting to the point where, you know, we have car fit that we're helping to fit the vehicle to keep you as safe as possible and to reduce that mm -hmm. chance of risk of injury or death if you're involved in a crash. But now automakers are doing that for you to get you that safest fit in your vehicle. So that was just and, it, and it's pretty considered a luxury item too, yeah. which kind of sucks. Well, <laughs> I mean, but it's, you, it's, you it's kind of ground ground baking. Good, yeah. It, well, then you know you can't you don't have a Genesis. Come and see. Come right. to a car fit event, and we'll yes, do it for right. you for free. <laughs> but, but usually those those modifications start at the higher end, then they kind of. Drive. They come sure. down to the lower ends because they realize, okay, it becomes cheaper and cheaper to install, put in. So maybe we'll start. Yeah, that's real interesting. I know that a lot of the a lot of cars have that memory that you can tell it where mm -hmm. um, driver one, right? And I'm, but it's not that no. saying that you the have best to spacing it, exactly. Yeah, you have to set it wow. yourself. But so I think that's coming. Uh, Kimberly and I that's were great. also just talking about this. I attended Morpsey, the Mid Ohio Regional Planning Commission's transportation. Transportation Safety Forum yesterday, and Dr. John Bolte was talking about how um, he hopes that car manufacturers start making this in all cars because he said, why do you have to be rich to have a car that's going to keep you safe? It's really an equity question. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, hopefully we'll start seeing that in a few years. Change mm -hmm. takes time, but I'm mm -hmm. I'm an eternal optimist. So I, I look forward to that day. It, but it didn't take ca um, car manufacturers very long to adapt things like, you know, the rear, the, the, the video or the camera in the back and the mm -hmm. camera on the side. And it, it started at that luxury level, yeah. but it quickly got down to all of the absolutely but you know you're also fighting the 10 year gap that we typically don't buy new cars but every 10 years yeah so you're, you're fighting people, that as well right. mm -hmm. you know so yeah. you drive your car for 10 years it you know my wife and i got new cars two new cars this past year and it's um and, and again we are we're at that total mindset we drive it till it dies but the um, amazed at the uh the, the changes and all the safety stuff in mm -hmm. 10 years in these, and we still bought a used car, but it was a couple of years old, but just that change in what we had in the new car we mm -hmm. got, it's like, 
oh my gosh, there's a whole new world in this car. It is. So Kimberly, tell us a little bit about the policy changes that you see coming around to help older drivers and what, you know, what are the next steps for the strategic plan? What's going to be coming about? So a lot of the strategic highway safety plan, the older road user emphasis area, I don't know if I would call it policy changes is we, you know, we have this, this wide group um, from, you know, different backgrounds and, and, you know, the public sector, the private sector, all working together on different action items. So, you know, I told you that there's kind of, we, we separated it into four buckets. So in terms of our education efforts, so look for more with the Stay Fit to Drive campaign. Um, so if you haven't heard of Stay Fit to Drive, hopefully we can get the word out and, and, and get more information out there about that. We've just updated the website. Again, that's transportation.ohio.gov forward slash older drivers. I know it's kind of a long one. Uh, So we're going to continue to provide more information on the website for older drivers, family members, caregivers, really answering those, those questions that people want to know. We're also putting, you know, more fact sheets, the driver rehabilitation specialist fact sheet on the website. The Ohio Traffic Safety Office will continue to provide those federal NHTSA funds for Angie's position and the CarFit coordinator, the statewide CarFit coordinator program. Really, you know, just working to to get the word out. We have booklets, um, Stay Fit to Drive booklets that we are passing out at community events that have a lot of great information in them as well. And you can find all those resources on the website Uh, When it comes to alternative transportation, on the website, you'll find Safe Routes to Age in Place Toolkit. So basically, this is for communities um, that are looking to put together a plan to help older adults to age age in place, right? So they don't want to move out of their house, but, you know, maybe they need alternative transportation Mm -hmm. options. And and how how can you make communities more walkable, more more friendly to people that maybe have to take public transportation? Um, So all of those types of issues that that you might want to consider. Also, when it comes to the medically at risk drivers, there is a program called DOSI. That's Driver Orientation Screen for Cognitive Impairment. And that is being integrated into the Peace Officer Training Course. So DOSI is a tool for law enforcement that was developed um, by the Training, Research, and Education for Driver Safety or TREADS in the University of California with the California Highway Patrol. So it was developed in California. It's a series of questions that helps law enforcement officers identify drivers with cognitive impairments once they've ruled out drugs or alcohol. So they ask a series of questions based on the score. Um, They determine whether that person could be cognitively impaired, and then it will provide next steps. So, okay, you determine somebody maybe is cognitively impaired. What do you do from there? Um, And so that's being integrated into the peace officer training here in Ohio. So law enforcement will know how to handle it and what to do um, if they find somebody could be cognitively impaired. Um, We've also placed information on the BMV website for physicians. So what do physicians do? if they are concerned about somebody's driving. Um, so that's that's a question that a lot of physicians don't really know what to do when we're mm-hmm. telling people to go to right. their physicians, so we have to educate the physicians. Um, you know, when it comes to infrastructure, just working on continuing various infrastructure improvements that improve driver safety in general, as well as older drivers. So improving the use of roadway features such as curbs and medians and edge lines, um, and then helping to aid older drivers with decreased depth perception and contrast perception by using techniques, um, a whole list of them, you know, the edge lines, reflective pavement markings, raised pavement markings, post-mounted delineators and chevrons, bike-friendly center and edge line strips and optimal materials, all all those, uh, you know, engineering things that that you can do those those bits and pieces add up they really do Mm -hmm. and and odot's you know really taking a look at this and taking a look at how can we 
use some of this money from the Strategic Highway Safety Plan to help with some of these. Mm -hmm. um, so, so ODA is is really looking into this and is really focused on this as a whole. I, I, we mentioned it earlier that what we do to help older keep older drivers safe will help all drivers. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, I know, dear listener, you know we had to go here, but there are many hard things we have to do as an adult child, but we got to ask our parent to give up driving <laughs> and taking away the keys. So if you have a family member, friend or neighbor you fear is not driving safely, what can you do? And what tips do we have that, you know, we can all use to ease that person into realizing that danger um, they face for themselves and others if they continue to drive. I'm going to assume, I'm going to start with Angie. You both may have different perspectives because of who you talk to and, and, and see. What, what, do you, what do you think about that? What have you seen or have heard or would ad advise what's the best approach? Well, first, I think that we're so lucky to be living in an age where we have so many different resources available to us. We are living in a time when you can order your groceries online and get those delivered straight to your house. Um, same with meals, prescription medication. So there, it's a difficult conversation, but I fortunately we have some alternatives. Um, so, you know, we want to start off by being very respectful of the person and and knowing that when you when you lose your ability to drive that's the one of the biggest losses of in, of independence that you can have right so that's why we do want to do all of the things that we can first to get them to drive longer um, but then we can start by looking at our community around us is there a neighbor close by or a relative or someone in your um, your spiritual community that can be an alternate driver for you. That's one step. Um, you can call your area agency on aging to talk to them about transportation options. Um, a lot of them, you do have to meet a, a level of care, but there are county levy programs here in Franklin County. We have Franklin County Senior Options. So I would encourage people if they're looking for transportation resources to call and speak to them to see what's available to them there. Correct me if I'm wrong, what I'm hearing you say is possibly the best way to do this is look for some alternatives, look for solutions before you approach the subject. Absolutely. Have that, a plan. So have a I, plan. I think Kimberly already said that researchers are saying that we're going to outlive our driving retirement by 10 years. So all of us have the opportunity to make a plan for what that's going to look like when we're no longer able to drive. Right. Yeah. What do you think, yeah. Kimberly? Well, and in the, in the Stay Fit to Drive booklet. There's actually some information on this, um, and that's why this is a really helpful resource for, for families. So one of the things it says is to stop, look, listen, and act. Okay, so stop, never scold an older driver, right? So you, you want to be supportive, like Angie said, and kind and, and you know understand what they're going through. You want to look, so take a ride with them, analyze their driving skills as objectively as possible. Uh, listen, really listen and try to understand their concerns. And then act is work together to create a transportation plan. Um, so this may be with a physician. It may be with a driver rehabilitation specialist, other professional um, or other family members. So making sure that really using that empathy, right, under understand what that must be like if you can no longer drive instead of getting frustrated and just taking their keys. Because one day it's going to be you. Right. It's going to be all, oh, God willing, right? It's right. going to be all yeah, of us. Yeah, right. You know, right. And so therefore you'd want to, I think we would want to model for your kids that you handled this for your, you know, it right. kind of goes down generation to generation, it I does. would think. It does. Kimberly, tell us the name of that booklet again. So it's a Stay Fit to Drive booklet. Um, and on the Stay Fit to Drive website, we have, there's a link um, that you can actually download that booklet. Okay. Um, so you can download it. We pass it out at community events, but um, that booklet and all the information is on the website. So now that person is no longer driving, what services, programs, resources exist to help them get around? They may not, you may not live near your parent and they need help. Um, with transportation, like going to the doctor, grocery shopping, church. We've talked a little bit about that, but do you have any other tips? 
Yes, there is the free GoHio Mobility website to find local public transit and other transportation options in your community. That website is www.gohiocommute.com. There are mobility managers throughout the state. They're not in every county, but they're in most counties. Um, You can get in contact with your mobility manager and they can help you find ways for you to um, get around in your community. There also, you know, some older adults might be eligible for Meals on Wheels. So we talked about, yeah, you can get your groceries delivered, Mm -hmm. right? But, um, you know, maybe that's that's too expensive, right? So you can get Meals on Wheels as a program that delivers hot meals at a low cost. Mm -hmm. So you can contact your area agency on aging to see if if you qualify for that program. Yeah, I was going to say the the CAAA or, you know, a local area agency on aging, a, is designed to, to help answer the questions. Absolutely. Correct? we They a, say that we are the front door to all of your aging questions. We're a one-stop shop for any aging questions that you might have. So yeah, please call us. You'll get directed to the screening department. I'm no longer there, but there are lots of amazing people that are, and they can help answer those questions for you. I, I think the most important message that we've got today is to let the listeners know that if they're having an issue or one of their loved ones or friends or neighbors is having an issue, there are resources. Resources. Absolutely. So before they are in fear of giving up their keys, lots of steps to take, lots of resources to take advantage of. And um, listeners, we will have our resources sheet listed, um, in- included on our um, website so that you'll be able to go back and see all of this, including how to download the, uh, the, new, the, the booklet that Kimberly has told us about, the Stay Fit to Drive booklet. So we want to thank both of you for spending some time. Obviously, both your schedules are busy, so we're glad we got you here. <laughs> and knowing that what's coming up in the next couple of months as we record, it's busy time. So thanks for both of you coming in. We've we've never been able to cover this topic. We've talked about this a lot in regards to who do we talk to, who do we talk to. And I think we talked about it before the CarFit program and, and everything's been put into place. So this is great timing, and this has been fantastic. So as we do with our guests, love to have you leave some last words of wisdom that uh, maybe to encapsulate what you just talked about or something that maybe popped in your head that you didn't get to say before. But uh, Kimberly, let's start with you in regards to just that, 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 that gem that you can walk away with for this podcast. Yeah, I think that, you know, when people hear us talking about this, they they get an adverse reaction like, oh, gosh, they the state just wants to take away my keys. And I just want people to understand that that's not true. Our Our goal is to help Keep people safe, keep them driving as long as safely possible and mobile thereafter. Um, And so we continue to work with community partners across the state to try to implement programs um, that that can help people. Resources, programs, um, you know, CarFit is an amazing program and people don't really understand what it is, but um once you understand and once you go through one you can see how much it benefits not only older drivers but all drivers Uh, and we are so excited to have angie here um, in this state to to expand this program so that more people more ohioans can experience it and, and can be safe and reduce their risk behind the wheel angie well thank you kimberly I just want people to know that there are a lot of really brilliant people here in Ohio that are working on ways to try to decrease traffic fatalities, and I include Kimberly in that list. Um, There are Vision Zero programs throughout the state. There's one in in Columbus, so I encourage people to go and check that out. Um, People are working on, on trying to make it safe for people to get around in their cars and as pedestrians as well. Yeah, and Vision Zero means zero deaths on our roadways. And, you know, in Ohio, we lose an average of three people a day in fatal crashes. And that's that's just not acceptable. And so we are working to do everything that we can to protect Ohioans on our roads and, and keep them safe. Goodness yeah. You know, Brett, this has been incredible. As you said, we have really looked at this issue as a potential podcast topic since we started the podcast. Mm -hmm. And really, thank you both so much. 
Um, our experts, Kimberly Schwind from the Ohio Department of Public Safety and Angie Wise from the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging, um, thank you so much for joining us today and discussing this really important topic. Listeners, thank you for joining us. And do not forget to check our show notes on the website for contact information and the resources that we've discussed today. You can find all of this information at lookingforwardourway.com. And we're looking forward to hearing your feedback on this and any of our podcast episodes. 